Happy Friday, Mom Togs. Elizabeth here with Mommy's Gonna Snap. And on Fridays, it's Photoshop Day. So today we are going to be working with this image here. And we're going to be talking about workflow. Having a solid workflow is absolutely essential to creating consistent edits when you're working in Photoshop. And it's gonna help you develop your style as well. And it's gonna make sure that you don't miss any steps um, also when you're editing. Because you're gonna be walking through everything that you wanna do to an image or that you wanna look for in an image kind of in a step-by-step -step fashion. Um, so this is a great way to, again, build that consistency um, with your editing styles and make sure that you don't miss anything. So the first thing that I always look for when I am ready to edit an image is I look for any sort of exposure adjustments I wanna make as well as any sort of cropping or straightening that I wanna do. Those are the first things that I look for. So this image I want to crop just a little bit cause there's kind of this little annoying space right here that's a little distracting. So I'm just going to crop this down just a little bit. I'm gonna make sure up here that I've got my original ratio selected because I want this to stay in the ratio that it was shot at. And then I'm gonna click the check mark. And there we go, that's, that's much better. I didn't like that little white space up in the corner. I want the corners to be consistent on this side of the image. So it's just more visually pleasing that way. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to brighten up her face a little bit. I exposed for this golden light back here and the golden light that was hitting the flowers in her hair because I did not want to blow out these highlights. So I wasn't using a reflector or my flash. Um, so I just want to brighten up her face. So I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, and I'm going to use curves because curves is again, that really, really powerful, amazing tool that is perfect for tone adjustments, exposure adjustments, and all of that. So I'm going to brighten up her face. I want to see that beautiful toddler skin. I'm going to go like, I think right there is really good. And I'm just going to click that properties box closed. Now I want to brush this off the background. I want to maintain that depth um, where we've got that nice dark background. And I'm going to brush it off these flowers too, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. So I'm going to select my brush tool. I've got my nice soft black brush here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. My opacity is set to 100% on my brush and my flow is set around 50%. I like 50%, it works really well. Now I'm going to brush this off of the background here and I'm gonna go right up to her edges a little bit. I'm gonna brush this off all that background just like that go a little bit into these flowers here. Okay. Make sure we get everything really, really good. All right, that looks good. Make sure we didn't miss any spots over here. Okay, now I'm going to brush this off of this, but I'm going to lower the opacity of my brush and I'm going to put it around 30%. And I'm just going to brush this off so we maintain some of this depth around her and the richness of the dark greens and the richness of that light and that looks really good and now i'm going to make my brush smaller probably i'm measuring for her hair right here i'm going to flip it to white so that i can brush back on zoom in here Fix my opacity of my brush here back to 100% and I'm going to put the light back into her hair because I don't want this to look funny. There we go. All right, and that natural shadow there is fine. All right, so now if we click this on and off, we can see the adjustment that we made. 
I need to fix this area on her around her shoulder. There we go. So we can see this adjustment we made. We made this brighter, and it looks a lot better. We've got a lot more color in her skin tone that looks natural, and we've retained this nice golden light that's coming in around here. So the next thing that I'm going to do, once I'm happy with my photo is cropped and it's straightened and, and I'm happy with the composition of everything and I'm happy with my exposure adjustments is I'm going to go in and I'm going to start doing my retouching of my subject. And that is going to require me to flatten this image and I'm happy with what I've done. So I'm going to flatten my image here and I'm going to duplicate this layer. And I'm going to start working with her skin. What I want to do is smooth her skin out just a little bit. Um, and to do that, I'm going to use the high pass filter. So I'm going to go to filter other high pass. I find for my images around 10% or 10%, 10 pixels is perfect. Click OK. And then I'm going to hit Control I to invert this and that's going to be our softening effect. I'm going to change the blend mode to soft light and you can see how this is a lot softer if I click this on and off. It's subtle but it is soft. Then I'm going to click this little button down here that's the little circle inside the rectangle. That's our layer mask button and I'm going to click Control I to invert that so that I can brush this onto her skin. And then I'm just going to brush this at 100% opacity with my soft white brush, I'm just going to brush this onto her skin. I'm going to avoid the um, creases of her skin. I really just want to put this all around her skin, um, away from the creases. Just give this this natural little softness. Kids have this anyway, and cameras, especially when you have a um, really great nice sharp lens and you have um, a really nice camera you can end up picking up all these crazy details all the pores and everything and it can be a bit much um, as far as what our eyes naturally see when we're looking at kids so I like to do just a little bit of softening softening keeping it subtle keeping it natural and then leaving it at that now I am happy with that and the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer again and I'm going to sharpen the places on her face that I want to sharpen so I'm going to duplicate this layer again and I'm going to run the same filter filter other high pass Again, around 10 pixels I find is perfect for my camera and megapixel size and the data in the raw image. So that's what I use. You may need to adjust that for your camera settings. Again, I'm going to use the soft light mode and you can see how this has already added sharpness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my layer mask again and I'm going to invert this and I'm going to brush it on only those places that I want sharp. I want her eyes and her eyelashes to pop. I'm going to sharpen her eyebrows a little bit because she has really fair hair, it's really blonde hair, so I want to make sure I'm not losing that detail. I'm going to sharpen around her nose and this little crinkle on her nose. And I'm going to sharpen her lips. I'm not going to sharpen her teeth because her teeth are really sharp and they're really white already. So I'm going to leave those alone. I'm going to sharpen her dimples because those are adorable and they're a great detail. And I love that. So that's great. I'm really happy with how this is looking. You can see that we've sharpened and popped that detail. You can see that we've softened the skin just a touch. And now what I am going to do is I'm going to start working on brightening up the details of her face and giving this a little bit more of a painterly feel. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten this again. I'm happy where I am. And I also want to go in and fix a couple of these 
um, places on her face. She's got a little red spot here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Spot Healing Brush tool. This is the Band-Aid with the little dot, dot, dot circle around it. I have Content to Wear on, sampling all layers. I'm going to duplicate this layer over here before I do this. This is, not, again, non-destructive editing techniques. And I'm going to make my brush a little bigger. And I'm just going to click this red spot right here. And bam, fixed. I'm going to do the same thing right here. Fixed. And right here, fixed. The Spot Healing Brush Tool is absolutely amazing. I don't have to do anything other than, than that to fix those spots. They are fixed. I'm going to re leave the rest of her face alone. I don't need to go in. There's like a little speck of something in here. I'm not going to go fix that. Um, I, I really want this to look as naturally as possible. I could go in and get really detailed and get rid of all of these stray hairs and stuff, but I find once you start doing that, you're giving it way too much of a high fashion and beauty portrait. It's really easy to go too far and make the skin look over edited. You don't want to do that. Leave some of this natural stuff alone. I mean, they're, they're kids. They do not have to look perfect. I mean, I take pictures of my kids with peanut butter and jelly face all the time. And, you know, that's, that's fine because it's real life. And I find capturing that reality to be you know, the the best, I, I think, it's, it's the best thing that we can do to really capture the authentic memories of our kids. So this is looking good. And now we're going to move into um, brightening the eyes and working with the skin a little bit. So I'm going to flatten this again. Happy with those fixes. All right, now I'm going to duplicate the layer again. And I'm going to start working with my dodge and burn tools. That's this little hand print, hand pinchy fingers over here and the little lollipop looking tool. These are the two that we're gonna be working with, dodge and burn. I always tend to start with the dodge tool. I have my range set for mid-tones. My exposure is at 10%. And I like to work with the airbrush on so that you can work subtly and building up the effect, just like you're airbrushing makeup on. All right, so the way that I like to do this is I always start with the face and make my brush just a little smaller. Okay, I have watched multiple makeup contouring videos and this is really way, the way that you wanna think about dodging and burning is that you're applying the highlight to the highlight area, her little nose here, her little cheeks. So if you watch makeup contouring videos and you see where they put the highlighter, that is where you want to put your dodge tool, okay? Does that make sense? And then when you're working with the rest of the body, you want to put the highlight anywhere that you see the light coming in on your subject. Now, that's the highlight. This is the first first layer here. And then we're going to go and we're going to click over to Dodge Tool. Again, mid-tones 10%. I click my airbrush on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the whole edge of her face like that. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to get these dimples a little bit. That is going to really make those pop. I And I really want to see that. And then I'm just going to do right over her eyebrows. Again, just because she has that fair skin, I really want to make sure that I can see them. And then I'm going to go in and just do the shadow areas on her skin over here. And down the side of her arm. So, this is the spot there. Okay, so that is looking good. If we click on and off, you can see the huge difference there that that makes. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to zoom in and I'm gonna work on her eyes a little bit. I'm gonna bring some more light and life into her eyes. And I'm going to, again, start with my dodge tool. I'm gonna get down really small brush 
And I'm going to work on the whites of her eyes a little bit. Oh, just get that popped a little bit. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to work on her irises here. I want to get those baby blues popping. She has really beautiful eyes. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm going to go over the eyes again. You want to make sure that you don't overdo it on the eyes. You don't want to make them look unnaturally bright. I think that's looking like really good. We're not going to get that icy blue color coming out of her eyes. It's, it would just be way, way, way too much. So I'm really happy with how this is looking. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten this image and I am going to call that happy with the retouching. Kids don't need much. Really, really, really keep it simple. And now it's time to get artistic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some warmth to her skin and maybe to the image overall. And then I'm going to bring in some gorgeous light with an overlay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my create new fill layer or adjustment layer button down here. And I'm going to collect, select solid color. And I'm going to select that peachy pink color that I love to use. And I'm going to change my blend mode to soft light. And I'm going to take this around maybe 30% for this image. We click on and off, we can see that warmth, but I really want to only apply this to her because I know that I'm going to be using a light overlay that I'm most likely going to brush off of her all the way. So I'm going to just go over here and click Control I to change up my layer mask. And I'm going to select my brush tool, soft white brush, make my brush bigger, and I'm going to brush this onto her skin. And then we've got this nice little sun-kissed skin tone going on that looks just lovely. Really balances out the photo. Get rid of that blue hue that was going on. And we could do this with curves, but I just find the soft light layer just works great. And it adds in that gorgeous little light feeling to the image. It just brings it a little bit to life more and I just really like it. So that's that's my preference. All right, so I'm happy with that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a light overlay to add in some just gorgeous light. We're gonna be playing off this sun setting golden glow that's in the background here. So I'm going to go to file place. And I'm going to go to my D drive and I'm going to select one of my uh, favorite KCC Light Leaks overlays. These are absolutely beautiful. If you don't have them, I highly recommend that you invest in them. They are really affordable and they're just a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous product. All right, so I think what I want to try is maybe this basking light here. So I'm going to click this. Now the light's coming from the wrong side. When you're using overlays, particularly light overlays, you always want to make sure that where the light is pointing in the picture, in the overlay rather, matches where the light is coming from in the picture. In the picture we're working with, our light concentration, this golden glow, is on this right hand side of the image, not the left. So to easily flip this, we're going to go to Edit, Transform, flip horizontal, and it's as simple as that. Now our light areas are matching up. Now to use the KCC light overlays, we just simply change the blend mode to screen and adjust to fit or to your liking and click OK. And now we've got this gorgeous pop of light with this gorgeous haze, haze, hazy glow in the image and now I'm going to add an 
a layer mask. And I don't like how this is washing out the detail of her face. So I am going to start with 50% opacity brush and I'm going to brush this off of her. And the reason that I choose 50% is because I want these layers that I'm building up on to really blend together. If I were to brush this off of her at 100%, it might not look as natural as it could look. And we always want our editing to look as natural as possible. I find that to be the best way to do it for achieving the best end results. You don't want your images to look fake unless you're going for that super fantasy storybook page um, edit. If we're if we're doing pictures of real life uh, people for for real life purposes and memories, then I definitely suggest that you keep it subtle and simple and natural looking. And that is looking absolutely gorgeous. I am loving this. Now the last thing that I want to do is I want to add a vignette to add even more depth and and um, richness to this image. I really love the way that vignettes can just pull everything together. And the way that we are going to do that is we are going to click on our new layer, adjustment layer button, and we are going to click on gradients. And we are going to change the gradient style to radial. Now trust me, this is, we're going to click reverse. And then we're going to adjust the scale of this. All right, you see how if we have a smaller scale, we're bringing it in really tight. And if we have a larger scale, we're doing the edges there. That's what we want to work with. And I'm going to put this maybe around 300 and we can go in and, and play with brushing this on and off later. And then now what we want to do is we want to change the color of our gradient. And I'm going to do that by clicking on this. Let's see. That's not what we want to do. <laughs> we can do bullseye. Not funny. Okay. We're just going to click on the square box here. We just want to change the color of this outer edge. So we can change it to gray and get all the way down to black. What I'm going to use, I think, is I'm going to use like a dark, dark purple maybe. I'm going to click OK. Color. Really dark purple. And now, this looks way, way dramatic. It's way too much. So we need to play with our blend mode over here. Overlay looks like that. That's kind of fun. Soft light. Hard light. That's too much. I think I like overlay. I like how this gets this golden sun. It really looks like that sunset glow. It's just a little bit maybe too dark on the edges and I want to make sure that this is brushed off of her. So I'm going to select my layer mask over here. I'm going to brush this off of her completely. I don't want this on her at all. I'm going to change my brush to 100% for a minute. Just make sure that I get this off of her entirely. All right, and then now I'm gonna brush this off the flower areas because this is too dark for me and I'm gonna brush it off the corners over here a little bit. I wanna keep this rich glow over here. I love that. So I'm gonna lower this to 50%, my brush opacity here, and I'm just going to start working around this edge over here, brushing this off. Go up into the flowers, brushing this off, brushing it off. Go. All right, and now I'm going to lower my brush to 20%, and I'm just going to go right around the edge of this pop of light that we like. 
and just blend this in like that so it looks a little natural. And I might even go over that a little bit, take some of that harshness away from that bright, this bright pink strip right here. There we go. I am happy with that. So that's our vignette off and back on. And now she's looking a little bit cool again to me. So I'm going to add a photo filter. Now click layer adjustment button down there at the bottom. Click on folder photo filter. And I like to use warming filter 85 and I find around 25 to 30% is good. I think we're gonna bump this up to 30. And I'm gonna invert this so that I can brush it just entirely on her. And just warm her up just a little bit more. If you think that you might need to warm your image up, then you probably do. Um, especially if you're gonna post it on social media because Facebook has a tendency to mess with color saturation and if you got too much blue in there, it's probably gonna look blue. So there we go. I am happy with that. It's a gorgeous, adorable image of this little girl. A little button nose and her sweet smile and her sparkly eyes. It just looks absolutely beautiful. I think her mom is really going to love this. So now that I'm happy with this image, my final, final part of my workflow is to flatten the image and then save it as a JPEG. I hope you all enjoyed this workflow tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to message me, put them in the comments, put them in the Facebook group. I'll get back to you guys as soon as possible. And if you enjoyed this, please like, share, and subscribe.